What is the gut? For starters, the gut is not a part of your stomach. The gut refers to everything between the mouth and the anus. It's the part of your body responsible for receiving food, for digesting it and for eliminating it from your body. Of course, we also think it's the place where we seem to feel a pit when our boss suddenly says, we need to talk. Do you remember the lessons in school on the digestive system? Here's a recap. It begins with the mouth and continues to the esophagus, the pipe which connects the mouth and the stomach. The esophagus contracts and squeezes the food downwards into the stomach. Here, the stomach uses hydrochloric acid to break it down into a semi-liquid mixture. This passes through the small intestine where with the help of enzymes from the pancreas and the liver, the food we eat is broken down into carbohydrates, proteins and fats. The acid from the stomach is neutralized here, the nutrients are absorbed and sent into the bloodstream and the food is passed on to the large intestine where it is eventually converted into one of the most useful emojis. That's what the school biology lesson was all about. All of this is the gut. Why is the gut so important? The body has a hundred trillion bacteria and about 90% of them are in the gut. Bacteria is so heavily associated with infections and ailments that I'm sure you must have thought that they're a health hazard to your gut and that you need to drink Clorox or something to clean it out. Okay, please don't. You don't need Clorox because not all bacteria is bad. In fact, there's good and bad bacteria. And the key is in managing the levels of both. These affect everything from your immunity, your weight, mood, metabolism, everything. The higher the good bacteria, the better your health. And since most of these are present in your gut, it's of utmost importance to nurture your gut health. How do we start collecting gut bacteria? Let's understand how this bacteria got inside you. As you are born, microbes start colonizing your body and the collective genetic material of microorganisms residing in and on us develops. It begins during the delivery as the baby passes through the birth canal where it comes into contact with the mother's microbes. As we grow from babies to toddlers, our curious nature makes us explore the world around us. Eating solid food for the first time, crawling around on the floor and even munching on a bit of mud from a flower pot all of these introduce new bacteria into our developing gut. The composition of our gut bacteria depends on our own actions. Anything that finds its way into our mouth in the process could soon be building its own empire in the world of our gut. Imagine, you've been making such life-changing choices since you were this little. How did you become so indecisive as an adult? Did this attack feel like a punch in your gut? See, I told you, it affects everything. Good bacteria help with digestion and nutrient breakdown. They help break down complex carbs, fibers and other nutrients and also interact with the immune system, influencing its development and response. Gut bacteria play a role in training the immune system to tolerate harmful substances. Bad bacteria on the other hand is, well, bad for you. It leads to imbalanced gut health and even makes you crave unhealthy foods like sugary foods, even more. For example, a bacteria strain like lactobacillus helps with breaking down and absorbing nutrients that is why we call it good bacteria. And bacteria like salmonella can cause food poisoning and therefore we see it as bad bacteria. So what do we want? A healthy gut! And how do we get it? Yeah, by growing the good bacteria and eliminating the harmful ones. How to achieve good gut health? Now I know I've convinced you on keeping your gut clean, but please put that Clorox down. Allow me to tell you the three ways to achieve good gut health. First, of course, manage the food that you eat. Eat more fiber rich foods like whole grains, legumes, fruits and veggies and fermented foods like yogurt and miso. This stuff is the fuel that good bacteria needs. Have more prebiotic foods like bananas, onions and asparagus. Prebiotics are non-digestible carbohydrates that pass through the digestive system intact and reach the colon where they are fermented by your gut bacteria. And avoid processed and sugary foods because these foods are like cocaine for your bad bacteria which will make you crave them even more and then put you in this vicious loop. Second, clean but don't overclean. While it's important to keep harmful bacteria at bay, it's equally important to maintain a healthy balance of good bacteria in our environment. Using too much of a disinfectant on all your surfaces, on your hands and in your home will kill even the good bacteria. Use water and a little cleaning fluid instead. 
This can reduce the number of bacteria on surfaces by 90% while still leaving behind the good bacteria that help keep things balanced. Take special care when cleaning eggshells and raw meat since their surfaces may be contaminated with salmonella. Use a plastic cutting board because they have lesser space for the bacteria to hide. Third, use antibiotics thoughtfully. Have you ever taken antibiotics for a cold? Cough and cold are symptoms of a viral infection. Antibiotics are powerful tools for fighting bacterial infections, but they don't do anything against viruses. When we take antibiotics unnecessarily, we not only kill off the harmful bacteria, but also helpful ones which make up our microbiome. And this, unfortunately, leads to a less diverse microbiome and even changes in the abilities of the bacteria it contains. So that's it for now in this episode of the Whole Truth Academy. 